guys, Willie Thomas here, and we're going to be looking at how we can take Google Slides to the next level by making them a little more interactive than just a presentation tool. So we're going to look at the different ways you can uh, create different types of things that can move around on your screen, that kids can interact with, to invisible check boxes and different types of stuff like that with all different types of projects and stuff. So this, this video series, you're gonna be able to look at all the different parts and you'll be able to skip through as well to uh, the different parts of the video inside of our channel on YouTube in that description box. So uh, like I said, great place to learn. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna actually dive right on in. Let's get started with uh, turning those Google Slides into an interactive session. All right, so I'm going to start with taking a PDF. So any random PDF that you may have out there that you've used before and you want to use again, but you want your students to be able to manipulate it. You want your students to be able to get on there and move things around. Well, I can easily put that into my Google Slides. And so I can make a copy of that and then send that out to all my students. And then they can move around different shapes. They can move around different numbers. They can add their own text boxes. Text boxes. They can go in there and type on text box that you may have available for them as well, all with inside of Google Slides. So the first one that we're going to look at here is this is a example of a quadrilateral sort. So basically what I did was I took a PDF and I turned it into a Google slide. I made it a background. So now students are able to actually come in here and click on my shapes that I've made and move them around. So that way they can do a sort, they can sort my different shapes. So I have my square as well. I can move that and put that into the different spots to where it needs to go. Very simple, very easy. So let's go ahead and let's talk about how I did that. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm actually going to uh, make me a new background here, make me a new slide, and then I'm gonna actually go in here and then find the PDF that I used to create this. And really simple, uh, I have my PDF available right here. So here's the background that I end up using. And so I'm just going to take, I took a real quick little snippet of this, okay, which allowed me to take that picture and put it into my Google slide, okay, as a background. So once I took this picture, you can use Windows Snippet Tool or you can use a screenshot or however you wanna do, or if you have, uh, you know, there's online, definitely lots of online tools. If you have an app that allows you to save the PDF as a JPEG, I would do that as well. So once I go back in there and I have my is my uh, picture here, my image, so I'm gonna go in here and I click on change background. So I'm gonna change that background. I'm gonna choose an image. And so since I've already got this image available, there we go. And I made it my theme, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I chose my image my, that I've taken. Remember, it takes JPEGs. I uploaded it, and I saved it as my background. So I'm going to hit Done. So now this image is my background. So as you can see, students cannot click on it. They can't delete anything that's off inside of this. Uh, this is just for them to be able to uh, work with as their background. And so my shapes that you saw up here, these are really simple. So inside of the shape, tool right here. I click on shape and I got my square. So I'll go ahead and draw that out. And I'm actually going to, as you can see, it makes it gray. So I'm actually going to hit command, uh, copy and then I'm going to paste, 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 paste. Okay. So I got my four and then I'm going to go ahead and create all my different shapes here. Throw a triangle in there. Command C. There you go. And we'll do one more for good measure. As you can see, they have all different kinds of shapes that you can use right inside of your shape tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one there, and then I'm going to copy and paste, paste, paste. So now I have my shapes, 
in, er in order for me to change the color of my shapes, all I have to do is just select all of them. So real simple, I put my mouse up here, I select all my shapes here that I want for my square, and then I come over to my paint bucket, and I hit fill color, and we're gonna make those red. And I'm going to select all of these as well, and I like a nice blue, and you know, your kids, of course, you know, my kids too, they love, you know, all the different bright colors. So we'll make this maybe like a teal or something. That looks pretty cool, right? So now I got my teal shape. And so now students are able to come in here and they can drag and drop. So once you have your shapes made and anything else that you want on your screen here for students to be able to manipulate and do, um, all you will need to do is just export this um, and save this for your students, either through Google Classroom, Schoology, or however you get it to them, and make sure that it makes its own copy. Make sure that they make their own copy, and once they make their own copy, that's theirs to be able to come in here and manipulate as well. So really straightforward and simple uh, when it comes to doing that. The same exact thing can be done here with the traits. So this is the exact same thing. I took a PDF, this one's in color, and I actually made it uh, the background image again. I actually changed the layout of my slide. Now, how do I do that? I'm gonna come into File, Page Setup, and then I'm actually going to change this to eight and a half by 11. Because the PDF that I got was eight and a half by 11, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that range right there for that. And so once I type that in and hit Apply, it's gonna make it eight and a half by 11. So I like that a lot. Uh, so that way it doesn't squish anything or make anything smaller uh, so you know people can't read it or it doesn't look good. So same exact thing, I have my PDF here. Uh, this time I kinda, I want them to go in here and type in, all right, the different types of things that, that I want them to go in there. So I'm actually gonna come in here and grab my uh, shape tool. And I can do a couple of things. I can either put the shape in there and then they double click on it and they can go in there and type on it. Or I can just grab a text box. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on text box, draw my text box out there right where I want it to be. And since these are all the same size, I'm actually going to copy my text box and paste it a couple of times. That way now all I have to do is just drag them into the places that I want them to be able to type in. There we go. So now I have all my text box. They need one more. There we go. So now my text box are there, even though you can't see them, they're there. Now, for those for your kids, if you feel like they would need to see those text box, how can I outline that? Go ahead and click on one and you can actually add a border to your text box. So where that little pencil comes up right here, I click on that. I can make all these blue up here at the top. I can make these a different color here, red. All right, and so on and so forth when it comes to text box. So they know that something's there and then that way they can manipulate later if they need to. Now with this one, I was all, I've also added some instructions on the side. So this is really helpful. So if this is in Google Classroom, or like I said, Schoology, and you don't want them to have to go back and forth to figure out what it is that they're doing in the description, this is a great place to put that. So on the side, I just put a text box and I typed exactly what they need to do. Uh, I also added a video. So if you want some video instructions or something like that, but your video instructions are really cool because they're able to click on it and the video plays right inside of person's Google Drive. the Google slide. So it plays right inside of there. So any questions that they may have, you can address all of those. So that way they can go back. If you want to teach less like a mini lesson about this or through this, or maybe read a book that goes along with this, you can do that as well right inside of here. So that's very helpful to have a video right there um, available. So now that I have my text box, they can come in here and, and use my instructions here and they can actually put down what it is that they need to be writing. So like I said, your text box are available, they come in here, they click on it, and then they start typing, uh, you know, stands 
at command, jumps through hoop, whatever it is, you know, if that's inherited or learned trait. So which, which one would it be? So let's go with balance on a ball. We know that that is a learned trait. And like I said, they can continue to go down, type in the information that they need for that, and then, they're able, then you're able to assess you know, what it is that they learned in there as well uh, through that. Now, you're also able to go in here and add a little more too if you want to. I, so I like that part a lot. So they can add their own additional information that they may have learned or read about, about that particular organism or about that particular animal or whatever right inside of this as well. Now, for those who aren't necessarily you know, someone who you, you're good typers or it maybe takes too long or you're looking for some type of accommodation uh, with that. This next one here, my slide two, I actually took the words and made shapes and then typed the words or the explanations inside of the shapes. So now all they have to do is just click on a shape and drag it and drop it right inside of there drag it and drop it. So exact same thing that they had to do in this one, but this one, like I said, they don't necessarily have to go and type everything, but they can drag and drop, but they still have to add their own information, things that they have learned uh, into this particular assignment as well. Really simple way to take my PDFs and make them a little more interactive for my students as well. Uh, just like I said, really, really great way to just kind of enhance what it is that you're trying to do. This can be done in a small group, uh, some type of station, maybe some, maybe homework, um, however it is that you want to do. You can even do this if you have your interactive displays in your classrooms. This can be a whole group or even a small group at your interactive display with your students. Your students can make these as well using Google Slides. All right, so if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to uh, hit us up if, and let us know. And we'd definitely be able to help you out. Um, and we're going to go into our next uh, video here in a, in a little bit. So make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. If this is the end of your video, you, you know, you're know you not continuing on to the next part. But like I said, really excited about this. And uh, we'll catch y'all guys later. Thank you very much. Hey guys, all right, I'm back. So we are now going to take a look at creating our interactive Google Slides uh, from scratch. So we looked at, you know, what it would look like to put in a PDF. So now we're going to go ahead and create one of our templates right here from scratch. So I'm going to take a look at, uh, we're going to look at the Ferrer model, but you can use this with any type of uh, sort that you want them to do, any type of graphing. Uh, that you want them to do and being able to pull in different images and stuff like that uh, to be able to uh, write and annotate right inside of your Google slide. All right, so let's take a look and dive right on into creating your own Google slide interactive template. So you see here, I have a copy of the Frayer model template. Uh, with this here, this is something I made that students are able to come in here and click on text boxes and fill out their information that I want them to fill out. Uh, just like if you would do like with vocabulary words or maybe a new unit of study, or if you're looking for any type of misconceptions or even some lead for strategies and stuff like that, this is a great place for you to be able uh, to do that and share this out with your students, whether they make their own copy, or if you're doing a live session as well, everybody can interact with this one as well. So as you can see here, as I click on these words, if they wanted to, they could come in here and they can delete these actual titles, uh, the different types of things that are going on inside of here. But what I want is for this to be a background. So that way that they cannot delete any of the information that I've sent out to them, any of the squares, circle, anything like that. So I want this whole Freya model to be a background. So that way they can put in their own information um, throughout the uh, activity. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a new slide here. And like always, I'm getting rid of my existing text boxes. Like I said, all these are just squares and circles and lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my square shape going. And we're going to make it 
almost identical right there. So there's my square shape. Now, as you'll see, it always makes that background a certain color, whether it's gray or blue or something like that. If I click on fill color, I can either make it white or I'm gonna make it transparent right now. And then I just grab my line. I really like this, how when it knows that you're drawing a line, especially from top to bottom or right to left, it had these little purple dots here. So if I click on my purple dot, it will actually, I can just take my line right to the dot and it makes it straight. Super nice, super fancy to be able to do that. Click on that as well. I'm gonna go right over the cross. There we go. Now I have my quadrants, but I do need a place to be able to put my word or put my picture or whatever it is that I want them to be able to, uh, that they're gonna be talking about and finding those traits or finding those qualities or finding whatever it is that's related to it. So I'm gonna go here and grab my circle. I'm gonna make it an oval here. And then I'm just gonna drag it right there to the middle. Get my lines to line up there. There we go, perfect. Now once again, I'm gonna have to come in here, but instead of making it transparent, I'm actually gonna make it white. So now I have our Freire model, just like you see this one up here, exactly uh, same right there. So I can come in here and I, I'm not gonna type everything right now. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna grab a text box and just put my words in there that I want and I can keep going around if I want to and putting the things that I want in each one of these boxes or these quadrants. And then I'm gonna actually do one here as well. And this is where I want them to put the word or you know, maybe the character's name or if they're reading a book or something like that or if you're studying a species and I want the different types of habitats or places they live. I'll have that right there in the middle for me as well. So I have that available, so this is where I want them to type. Now, when I'm done and I have this all set up the way I want to have it set up, I'm going to actually take this image or this slide, I'm going to go to File, Download, and I'm going to download this as a JPEG. Okay, so I'm downloading this as a JPEG, and just this slide that I'm on. So when I download it as a JPEG, I'm going to save it. And then I would normally go in and create a whole new like Google slide and name this one my template. Okay, that way, because that's the one I want the students to have. That's the one I'll be sharing out. So but I'm going to go ahead and just do it right here. And I'm going to do a new slide. <coughs> and once again, go in there and delete my text boxes here. I'm going to make this my background. So you just saw me create my slide. So now I'm going to make this the background, just like before. Choose image. And I'm going to, because it's right here, just drag it up there. So, But you can search by your uploads, browse your computer, just like always, or your Google Drive as well, if that's where your template's at. I'm going to let it go. And so then now, hit done. As you can see, I cannot click on any of the things that are in there, any of the words or anything that's available. So this makes it so that students cannot go in and jack up any of your stuff that you created. So now that it's a background, what I want to do is go in here and then make my text box, just like we did earlier with the PDF of where I want the students to type it. Now, if your students are older and you think you know, they can make their own text box, that's fine as well. You don't have to do this part. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm doing this part here, and so when I'm done, I have all my text box created. I will actually share this out to my students, either via Google Classroom or Schoology, and have it make a copy. So once it forces a copy and makes a copy for each student, the students are able to go in here and type inside of the text box the information that they need. They can even drop pictures in there if they want to as well. Uh, um, if you're looking for a picture that demonstrates what the word is, or if you're looking for some type of uh, like I said, misconception of what they uh, of what people may think it is or what's the opposite of it, uh, all that they can do right inside of this Google slide. So like I said, really great example for you to create your very own interactive Google slide. Like I said, you can do any type of 
shape or anything like that that you want them to be able to have and put off in there and use. You can have those sitting over here on the side or students can go look up their own information or type in their own information right inside of the Google slide itself. All right, so if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, you can catch up with us. We're going to move on to our next video. If not, uh, like I said, hit us up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that way you'll get notified when we upload new videos. Okay, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you later. All right, welcome back. So we talked about creating an interactive PDF where you take screenshots of your PDFs and you put them in a Google slide where students can annotate on top of them, uh, throw it in any type of shapes or images or text or any text box. We've also talked about you creating your own templates inside of Google slides that students can annotate on top of uh, and you know making those backgrounds as well so they can't go in and, and mess up anything that you want them, that you don't want them typing on or moving around or deleting. So we're gonna see what that looks like. We're gonna marry the two together in this animal research project that I that it's out there and this is what this can look like so you can have any type of research project that you want students to fill out with multiple slides and then they can just turn that back right into you uh, in whatever platform either Google Classroom or Schoology uh, students can submit that right back to you uh, through that so let's go ahead and dive right on in to this animal research project and as we marry the interactive PDFs and creating your Google slide template so this first slide that you'll see here is just a kind of a generic intro slide. So I know you're wondering, how did I change that layout? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on File and Page Setup. So this is where they will take all the research information and dump it into one place. That way uh, it's an ongoing research project and I can view it as well. But I went ahead and I changed the page setup here to eight and a half by 11. So like I said, standard sheet of paper. So if I did want to print it out, maybe give it out to the parents or something like that and send it or send it to them. This is a really easy uh, way for me to get that information to those parents uh, when it prints off the printer. So I'm going to hit apply. And as you can see here, this first uh, particular slide is just kind of my intro slide. So I took a te text box and put the word buy in there. Uh, if I wanted them to maybe add a picture, I could go ahead and do this here and say your animal picture here. So if, so if I wanted them to put their animal picture right there, they could actually go in there and the animal that they're talking about and researching, they could put that picture of that animal right here and kind of lets them know this is what I want. So this is, like I said, a great place to be able to do like a little placeholder as well. And they can delete that if they want to uh, throughout the different projects as well. So my animal picture there, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a border. Sorry, give that a border there. So that way they know animal picture there. And then this next one, my table of contents. All I did was take the line tool and just draw out my lines. And these are all text box as well. Okay, now I'm doing all this because remember at the end, I'm going to actually share and save uh, this whole thing, okay, as a, a JPEG. So that way the students themselves can't delete my lines. So this is going to be, uh, like I said, really great opportunity for you to be able to do that. Um, and then they'll just be able to insert their text box and type on it, just like we did in our last video. My next one is my body. So all these are for your students who uh, you want them to be able to type or write on. As you can see here, those were just squares. Those were just shapes that I have in there. So you have my lines in here. So you can have them type in there. But I like to be able to kind of make my own text box. That way they fit. That way I don't have to make several different text boxes that go in here on each line. So I just took my square tool here. And I made it the size of where I need them to write. Change my color, make it white. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and just throw in a text box. So now 
they're able to type in whatever information that you're wanting them to do, to do or type in about their particular animal. So that is a really simple way to generate text box over lines that are supposed to be there as well. Uh, any diagram that they need to paste, they can paste that there and give directions over there. And remember, just like in our first video, any directions that I want on the particular slide itself, I don't have to just save it in Google uh, in Schoology or Google Classroom, I can actually put it right there on the slide. So as they're working through the research project, it lets them know exactly what it is that they need to be doing for that particular slide, what type of information as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and come down here, same thing. I can go ahead and take my shape tool and make it the size of the text that I want it to be, change my color to white, and throw in a text box. Now, if I want them to maybe do a text box here and maybe a picture of their habitat, maybe over here somewhere, really simple, they're able to do that as well. What I like is, you'll kind of see an example of here on my map. I'm gonna delete that too as well. So what I like is, you'll see an example of here on my map, I'm actually able, the students are able to go in and put pictures of their animals or stuff, that whatever it is that they're looking at or looking for, uh, they're researching, uh, whether it's maybe, maybe the author of a book and where they grew up at, if they're going on some, some type of quest or something like that. They can actually do that on the map itself. So I can come over here to the tools, and then go to the Explore tool, and then it will actually bring up things that I can go in there and I can insert and search the web for. I can also do the same thing if I go to Insert Image, and then I can search the web as well. So when I go to Insert Image, and I'm going to do a bear, okay, because I'm talking about the bears. So I could do a grizzly bear, or I could do, I don't know, the Kodiak bear, but I'm just gonna put in a bear right now. And I can, so your students are able to click and drag the image of their bear that they want on their map, resize it, and we're going to say this, these types of bears live in Asia. And then they can, like I said, go in, put any type of images in there right on their map, and then once again, if you want them to be able to type down here, you can either draw two different text box, or you just have them come in here or you come in here and draw your own text box with your shape. And now they're able to type in as much information as needed for the particular map. Like I said, very simple uh, way to continue a research project and one's very simple flow and then you can also go in there and view it as they're working on it as well. If they're working in partners, working in groups, they're able to go in and share this with each other to be able to go through. So like I said, we just kind of put together the PDF and also creating your own uh, elements inside of Google Slide to make your own template. So when I'm done, I would actually save this so that they couldn't go in and delete any of this stuff and make all of these these slides here are different JPEGs as well. So that way, the text box, I can put text box in there, but they can't delete the white box or anything like that that we have done in all, the, all of our other slides here as well. So, uh, really simple way to make your Google Slides interactive. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit us up. Uh, we're here for you to be able to answer any of those questions and help you move forward with making your slides interactive. Thank you very much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.